Hey everyone, how's it going? In the last video, we introduced talking about organic chemistry reactions with looking at our first functional group, alkenes, or double bonds. In the last video, we talked about our first example with hydrohalogenation, so we can really nail down the fact of nucleophiles, electrophiles, and how these organic chemistry reactions work. Throughout this video, we're going to talk about three new reactions with alkenes that are under the topic of electrophilic addition. Just as we did with the last video, we're going to try our best to focus on stability of intermediates, in this case carbocations for some of the reactions we're going to learn, regioselectivity, and stereochemistry. We also might have the chance of having rearrangement either by moving a methyl group or a hydrogen to form a more stable carbocation intermediate. Our first reaction we're going to look at, we're going to look at the halogenation of alkenes. Now I know this looks really similar to the hydrohalogenation of alkenes, but in this case we're not dealing with hydrogen halides, we're just dealing with halides such as bromine, chlorine, or iodine. Now this reaction is done in inert solvents, and the regioselectivity doesn't really matter since we will be adding two of the same groups onto the double bond carbons. In this case we're going to be adding the halides of the specific halide we're reacting to the two double bond carbons. Remember, halides are diatomic, so naturally in nature they're paired with themselves. And so you might be asking yourselves, what's the nucleophile and electrophile here? I know halides are very electronegative elements, so I'm very confused at what's going to be acting as the nucleophile. In this case, we have to think about a different approach. Because of the size of bromine, iodine, and even chlorine respectively, they're very polarizable. That means if they move close enough to the double bond, the double bond can actually polarize the halide, allowing it to act as an electrophile. So our reaction starts with the nucleophilic pi electrons attacking the diatomic element, in this case, one of the halides of our choosing. For this reaction, it's bromine. So the pi electrons attack one of the Br atoms, throwing electrons from that bond onto the other one, leaving us with a halide aion and a cyclic intermediate. Now this is not a carbocation. This is the result of the halide being slightly attached to both of the double bond carbons, giving the halide a positive charge. This reaction ends with the halide aion that we produced in the last step attacking our cyclic intermediate at the opposite end, resulting in our product, a dihaloalkane. Looking at the Newman projection of the product of this reaction, the dihaloalkane, we can actually see how the two halides attached to what was once the double bond carbons are in anti-conformations. They're in opposite spatial arrangements of one another. This is what we call anti-addition. Next reaction I want to analyze is the formation of halohydrins. We have an alkene and we have a halide. And that looks really similar to the reaction we just looked at before. But the difference is the solvent. In the last reaction, we had an inert solvent. In this case, we have a polar solvent, water. The solvent is going to interact with our intermediate in this reaction to form the halohydrin. The halohydrin is just when we have a halide on one carbon and uh, OH group on the adjacent carbon. In our last reaction, we're going to have the pi electrons interacting with the halogen to form our intermediate and also form the halide aion. Now, instead of the aion interacting with the intermediate, in this case, it's going to be water. This is going to break the cyclic structure just like before, but in this case, the water needs to be deprotonated once it's detached to our structure. This is where the halide aion comes into play. It deprotonates the OH2, leaving just OH on our product, leaving us with our halohydrin. And just like our last reaction, the Br and the OH are anti-addition to one another. So looking at the Newman projections, they're gonna be in opposite orientations. Last reaction I wanna analyze in this video, I wanna talk about the acid catalyzed hydration of alkenes. This is another really important reaction that the solvent plays a really big role in the reaction. In this case, we have acidic conditions because we have a strong acid and water which creates hydronium which our alkene is going to react with. The reason why there's two products in the reaction above is because 
we had a chiral carbon in the first example. And I wanted to show that in this reaction, if we have a chiral carbon, we're gonna create a racemic mixture, meaning that we're gonna have equal amounts of the enantiomer pairs in the solution. So after this reaction occurs, if we have a chiral carbon, we're gonna have equal amounts of both enantiomers, and this is why this reaction is called racemic because stereochemistry isn't really specific between the S or the R states. The reaction is gonna start with our solvent. We have a strong acid, in this case, sulfuric acid, reacting with water to form acidic conditions. Our alkene is gonna react with the acidic conditions by reacting with hydronium, which is electrophilic. The alkene is gonna rip a hydrogen off and form a carbocation. Now, in this example, I wanted to show the importance of when we have a carbocation intermediate, the major product is always gonna be the most stable carbocation we can form. So we have to think about rearrangement. And in this case, we formed a secondary carbocation through performing Makarovnikov's law, which we're used to. But by doing a hydride shift, we can have a tertiary carbocation. Then water's gonna attack our carbocation, forming a new intermediate. In this case, we have OH2 attached to our carbon chain, but this intermediate needs to be deprotonated. So the conjugate base of sulfuric acid is gonna react with our intermediate, deprotonate the OH2, leaving us with OH, a hydroxyl group and our alcohol product. And because this product was the result of the rearrangement of the more stable carbocation, this is what we consider our major product of our reaction. So we formed a Makarovnikov alcohol through acid catalyzed hydration of alkenes. But we've looked at four different electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes, hydrohalogenation, halogenation, formation of halohydrins, and acid catalyzed hydration, now looking back on the trends of alkenes, we can see how this matches the four reactions we've looked at before. We have our alkene, it's reacting with a molecule, and we're gonna be saturating the double bond carbons. Now moving forward in the next video, I wanna start talking about oxidation and reduction reactions. So in the next video, we're gonna explore different reactions that incorporate oxidation and reduction with alkenes to form a product. So I hope this video was helpful to talk about electrophilic addition. And remember, all the graphics you see me use throughout this video are for free download on my website, which I'll put in the link below. And I hope you guys have a great day.